Tensions around the world eased after Poland's president said it was a Ukrainian air defense missile that crossed the border into Poland, killing two people. To break down the latest developments, let's talk to a senior fellow at Defense Priorities and retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. Welcome back. Great to see you. Happy Friday Eve. Good to see you, Jen. Always good to be here. Thank you for joining us. Poland's president also said Ukraine was fending off a Russian assault when that missile struck a Polish grain plant. NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg said he wanted to be clear this was not Ukraine's fault, that Russia still bears ultimate responsibility as it continues its illegal war against Ukraine. But Colonel Davis, how likely is this to happen again? Because at some point, an accident could trigger a full-scale NATO military response. Well, you know, that's that's been my biggest fear. I, I think we've talked about it on your show several times over the years. I mean, over the months that, that since this war, right. because any kind of a mistake, an accident, a, a miscalculation where someone fires something and it goes astray or, or just a missile mis, uh, malfunctions. Uh, just imagine, for example, if this instead of hitting a farm had straight and hit actually a, a NATO uh, or American military formations, many of which are in Poland. Uh, or, or even a Polish military installation. I mean, we'd be having a very different conversation right now if something like that had happened. And look, we have some pretty graphic evidence of a 2019 U.S. Uh, simulation study that simulated then a hypothetical Russian-Ukraine war. And, and after a missile malfunction had landed in Article 5 situation resulted in an escalation to eventual nuclear weapons. That's how serious this can be and why it is crucial that we make sure this never happens, that anything escalates beyond the borders of Ukraine. Well, and that's, I think you brought up a very, very valid point, and that is when you look at this, it's surprising this is the first time this has happened during the past six months of this war, right? How, what are NATO's def defense obligations? What does this treaty require? Well, you know, Russia has actually said, and they reiterated again here, that because they are very conscious of this risk, uh, that they don't fire anything within 35 kilometers of the border. So that at least from their perspective, that they don't risk that because they know how devastating that would be for them. Uh, now, one of the things that I've seen that some people concerned already is that, you know, uh, Poland is supposed to have, you know, the top of the line air defense systems. And they're wondering, why did that missile not get shot down when it obviously is, is in an area where... Uh, the, the missile system should be pointing. And so that, does, you know, raises a little bit of question, just how effective would our assist systems be in that So, case. Colonel, how precise are these missile launches when it comes to hitting their targets, and how reliable, then, are these air defense missiles? Well, there's several different kinds of, of missiles that Russia is using. Some of them are, are, you know, older types that are only partially as successful. Uh, this current wave, the one that was found this morning as well as yesterday, are some of their top line stuff and it is very accurate. They seem to be having pinpoint accuracy on those. The air defense missiles on the other hand, the S-300 that likely caused this, uh, they go up into the air and try to intercept the missile in air. And if it doesn't succeed, all it's gonna do is just land wherever it was shot. And that's the real risk. And we now saw it graphically. Well, the White House is also now proposing to send 37.7 billion more dollars to Ukraine, which would then top more than $100 billion if it is approved. At this point, will this spending ever end? Since, and since we're not in battle with our own U.S. troops there on the ground in Ukraine, how do we know where this money is going? How do we know where these weapons well, are going? Right. That, that's, a, that's a big question, and, and I don't think anybody has a good answer because, you know, when these, these weapons come in there, uh, it's not like Ukraine has some sort of you know, strong system to monitor and track this stuff. They just ship it on out as soon as they get it. And God only knows where it ends up. I mean, they try to get it all to the front, but you know, there's so much opportunity for pilfering. And uh, I think in uh, Holland, they've seen some of this stuff show up in their in the underworld. Uh, in their uh, tra uh, crime people have used it in that area. And I'm sure that there's probably more of that going on. But the, the bigger question is, you know, how long are we gonna keep going on with such extraordinary volumes of money when, as General Milley said just yesterday, look, there's no military path for Ukraine to win this war. So I, I think that we, it might be in our interest to, to suggest, you know, that they do a little bit more to try to find the negotiated settlement as opposed to just going forever and, you know, as long as it takes, as much as it takes, when we know they really don't have a path to victory. All right. Retired Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for joining us here. We appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Jane.